what's new in ER Studio 19.3, support for Google BigQuery. Okay, so just to reiterate the ER Studio mission. So ER Studio is a tool for data architects. Those data architects are going to be building models of the information of the organization. And they're going to use those models to design and document data assets. And those data assets might be databases or files. We've got an ongoing mission to support all the popular data products for those data assets, so traditional relational databases, modern NoSQL databases, and file-based formats. We've got a secondary mission there to be able to connect those data architects building those models with other tribes and tools around the organization, namely data governance and data analytic teams. And the mission is to be able to form a single company-wide data ecosystem. So wherever you go, you're going to get the same answers and everybody's uh, collaborating together to provide information into that data ecosystem. ER Studio itself, there are three components to it. So over on the left, we've got Data Architects, the thick client tool. We're going to see that in a moment. Used by data modelers and data architects to build models, conceptual, logical, physical, etc. In the center, we've got our team server repository where everyone can share those models, version them, check them in and out. And then on the right, our web-based team server core. So we can then publish those models out to a, a wider group of stakeholders. Um, we can also build business glossaries and data catalogs within there. Team Server also then has a range of integrations and APIs that allows us to connect to other tools, data governance tools like Calibra, for instance, uh, and share those models. The model within the tool itself, there are three sections to it. So over on the right, we've got our technical data dictionary. So for each data asset, we can model the schema, the technical schema of that data asset. So here we've got a relational database. It's got tables, C, L, N, T, and a column in that table called C underscore R, T, N, G. We don't know what those really mean, so we're going to use logical data models. So entity relation diagrams um, that are all in business-friendly language with all our descriptions and our markup to describe the requirements and the meaning of all of the data in that schema. At the top, we then got our business glossary. So we can create lists of business terms arranged into a nice ontology for data stewards to be able to define the definitions and um, the requirements and policies on data that the rest of the organization is going to use. We can connect those three models together. If we expand the data modeling part, then we might have three layers to the model. Down at the bottom, uh, for each data asset, we'll create a model with logical and physical elements to it. And then at the top, we'll have a single set of common models. So we'll have a single enterprise uh, conceptual model, maybe, with the 50, 100 um, key concepts of the organization. We can then drill down each of those concepts into our enterprise logical data model, which has got standard definitions of our information. So we've got a standard definition of customer and the standard primary keys and mechanisms to identify a customer, standard properties and attributes of a customer, etc. And we can join it all together and navigate up and down the model. If we include in there our data governance aspects, then we can map business terms at any of those levels. And if we expand it out, then we can have many different types of data assets. So traditional relational databases for our applications. We've then got the newer hierarchical structures. We provided support in 19.2 uh, for MongoDB and JSON messages. We can model the data warehouse, our BI reports, tie everything together through an enterprise logical data model and tie everything to our business glossary. And this gives us an enterprise data model where we can successfully govern and manage the data of the organization. So... Data Architects version 19.3.1. We've now provided support for Google BigQuery. We've given you core product support. And that means that you can reverse engineer directly from the database. You can also import a Google BigQuery SQL file, the DDL codes for a particular data set. We can also generate the SQL code for a particular data set. And then Really importantly, we can generate these alter scripts. So many of you are using our studio to manage the change process. The change process is you create a logical model, generate the physical, then generate the code. As we change things, we'll change the logical, and we'll then propagate those changes to the physical model, and then we'll again compare the physical model with a live database. And then you can choose which changes you want to propagate to the live database. And then the tool will generate these alter scripts that will cause those changes to occur in the database. So that's our core product support. 
we've got our hierarchical model support. So Google BigQuery, a major feature of Google BigQuery is the ability to denormalize your model. So most databases are fully normalized. And Google BigQuery, we can create these nested structures, which makes Google BigQuery a hierarchical model. So we've got improved generation capabilities to, be able to generate from a relational logical model to a hierarchical physical model. We've got our improved visualization, so you can see the structure of the database in a format that's more familiar, and improved editing of those models. Compare merge is also improved, where we can compare from the relational logical to the hierarchical physical. We've also got tools in there to help with the denormalization process. You can split tables or nested objects inside those. So we might have something like an address. We might have a standard notion of address that we use in multiple tables in multiple places. But you then might want to decide, well, hey, we want a, a different type of address. So you can split your address table and create different versions of it and then reuse those. We also support features of Google BigQuery like clustering and partitions. So let's go and have a look. So here's Data Architects version 19.3. We've got in here a standard logical data model. Now the idea is with ER Studio is in the same tool, no matter what target platform you're gonna build, you're gonna start off with a platform independent model of the information and we use a logical data model to do that. So in this model here, we've got our library example. We've got books that contain chapters and sections um, published by a publisher. Um, we can check out those books to patrons of a library. Publishers, libraries, patrons all exist as addresses. So a standard logical model. And from this, we could create a standard SQL Server or Oracle database. We could generate a Mongo or a JSON structure or a Google BigQuery structure. Now, our hierarchical models like Mongo, JSON, and BigQuery have got the notion of, of denormalization. We're nesting objects inside other objects. And we do that to, to improve the performance. So BigQuery is all about performance. So when we're trying to get a list of publishers, for instance, and we want to see the addresses of those for each publisher. Now, normally in a, in a relational database, we'll have them as separate tables, and then when, when we're reading the address for a publisher, we'll do a join from one table to another. And join statements take processor time. They, they slow down the operation. So with BigQuery, the idea is that we can, we can put addresses inside the publisher as a nested object, and that improves our performance dramatically. So we might want to say, well, publishers, libraries, and patrons, we're going to be doing a lot of read operations on those. We want to get the addresses each time. So we'll put the address inside each object. Likewise, with our books, sections belong inside chapters, chapters inside books. We want them all rolled up into, into one object. So every time we generate a physical model that's hierarchical, we want to be able to control that nesting and have it repeatable. So what we've done, and we did this for, for Mongo and JSON, is inside a relationship line, we can specify containment. Is this relationship a containing relationship? And also the direction of containment. So we've specified here that section is contained in chapter, chapter inside book, address is inside all three of these objects here. Now check out, we could put inside book and library and patron in this example, we're just putting it inside book. Okay, so there's there's the, the model at a logical level. Now from this, we can generate our, our BigQuery model. So I select my target platform. I've got some options, which we can talk about in a moment on how the tables will be created from those logical entities. We also support uh, inheritance. So if you've got super sub relationships in your logical model, when you generate the physical, we can choose to generate uh, native Google BigQuery inheritance relationships. So one table can inherit all of its attributes off of the parent table. The first thing you'll notice is it looks slightly different from a standard relational diagram. So these lines here are new. The little black diamonds t is telling me that this is a containing relationship. And these are our normal referencing relationships. Referencing relationships aren't valid in Google BigQuery. When we generate this model as DDL, then it'll ignore these relationship lines. But what it is doing is, one, it's um, documenting those relationships in our model and also it's propagating any foreign keys. So again, primary keys are not valid in Google BigQuery, but using them to document and using them to help uh, propagate these foreign keys. So when we're actually reading and uh, manipulating the, the database, then we can use those primary keys and foreign keys. So the generation process is as follows. So step one, for each entity in the logical model, we generate an object 
in our physical model. Step two is we look at the, the relationships. So every logical relationship, we create a relationship in the physical. If it's containing, Marx is containing, we create a containment relationship and referencing relationships are, are created accordingly. Step three, we then go through each object and ask the question, am I contained in any other objects? So section and chapter here are contained in books. If they're contained, then we give it a round edge. It is a nested object. If it's not contained, then it's given a square edge, square corners, and it's marked as a table. Step three will then propagate any foreign key relationship. So a containing relationship will create a field of type record and connect the, uh, the tables together. So there's our model, and we're visualizing this as a pseudo-relational model, and we can change that to say, roll up the contained objects, mix into our top-level tables. So you can see now those nested objects have disappeared as objects, but they're, they're still inside the parent tables as these little roll-ups. So I can expand or contract those. We can then go and set some of the properties of the tables. So I can look at clustering. So here I've set this table to be clustered by the publisher and the genre. I can also set storage properties. So partitioning, I can specify, is this table partitioned? Which fields? So I've got a published date here, so I'm going to partition them by published date, and the partitioning period is going to be by year. We've also got some other additional properties we can set for the table. One of the important features of BigQuery is that all our tables live inside um, data sets. We can specify data sets as schema objects here, and then we can go through each table and set the data set for this table. Next step is to generate the DDL code. So I can generate a file, specify my file name. Um, I can choose to include comments in my output. I'm going to create the schema. In this case, it's going to be called my new model. I can now open my SQL code in my text editor using Ultra Edit here. And you can see, and we can do a review of the code, we can see that we're creating the schema objects, and then we're creating the tables against that schema object. So that looks good to me. We can now copy the code. We can go to our Google BigQuery console, paste in our code, and then we can run it. And it's now created both the data sets and all the objects. So if we look at the objects, I can look at my patron. I can see my fields. I can look at my book. I can see the fields nicely laid out. These hierarchical structures, again, are all created nicely. So um, I've got a repeated record of chapter and then my sections within it. I can then look at the details for the table itself. So descriptions have been brought across from ER Studio. I've got my clustering here all set up nicely. Okay, so to summarize, we've now got support for Google BigQuery, it's core product support, so we can reverse engineer direct from the database, import SQL file, generate SQL file, generate those alter scripts, really important. Really good um, support for those hierarchical models with visualization, generation, compare, merge, etc. And we're supporting key BigQuery features like clustering and partitions. Okay. Thanks for watching.